What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I am with my boy Erlon. Uh, he actually came right after work to come help me because, uh, yeah, we're doing a subframe today, which is probably a super big job for your man. So I think I could do it, but you know, having my boy right beside me, guiding me, supporting me, you know, all the good stuff. <laughs> Erlon's like, why am I here? <laughs> so, <laughs> shout out to him. <coughs> a couple days ago, we actually got the brand new wheel, a tire mounted onto the wheel. So I got a tire, a used tire, like I said, for like 200 bucks. It's kind of crazy. But this is the exact same tread, uh, same, exact same tread as the other side. Um, so that is a huge plus. And then uh, we got a brand new sensor in there. So this wheel is 100% ready to go. In terms of suspension, we got control arms from FCP Euro. So the tie rod's a brand new OEM one from FCP Euro. We got Got this boy which I don't know if you guys know but if you ever rebuilt M cars before all these are always scratched up from down here I don't know why but um they're always scratched up down here so um getting a new one does look a lot better this is again oh dear heavens <laughs> So it was new a second ago. And then this is the last control arm. Now these are OEM from BMW. This one is like an OE, but kind of like OEM. I don't know how that works exactly, but it's basically like an OEM part from FC Piero. All these again come with lifetime warranty just to put out there. Everything you guys get from FC Piero, lifetime warranty. Their link is gonna be down below. And the last thing we have here is a use part. Probably the only use thing I went with because it's just like a sway bar end link. I don't think that's a too big of a deal to go with a brand new part. I got this off of eBay for like 40 bucks, so it's not a big deal. And then obviously the final thing is right here, the knuckle. So our knuckle was actually completely shattered. The tie rod literally ripped it off right over here. So we have a brand new a used knuckle and we got all the suspension arms right there. We even ended up getting one wheel guard. We need the other wheel guard. And this is the brand new subframe that we ended up picking up. So I am so, so, so happy. This actually came out of a car that was um, rear end damage or like I think flood damage. So this thing is absolutely perfect. Everything's intact. No broken things whatsoever. It even comes with this front rail that I remember I had to pay for a long time ago, my first E92 M3. So it comes with that, but I might actually end up using our original one because this looks a little, uh, <laughs> it's looking a little greasy, I'm not gonna lie. The goal is in this video is to replace the subframe, replace all the control arms, put on the knuckle, put on the suspension, get this thing on the ground, and possibly driving tomorrow morning. So that is the most exciting thing because we pretty much got everything else dialed in in here. So once this thing's on the ground, we got it started, it should be driving. If you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button, but without further ado, let's get into it. Sheesh! Guys, we're working to get this subframe off right now, and I just realized another hairline. I mean, I would say hairline. That's a ma that's a major crack right there. All you guys just said weld the subframe together. My thing is, there's a lot of dents and stuff all over this subframe, and a lot of cracks and a lot of things that are just disconnected. That probably there's also some bends in this subframe as well. So we're just gonna replace the whole thing, and I'm happy we got a new one because again, there's just more and more cracks we're finding, and that's just crazy. This is that moment, guys, where I realized we're in deeper trouble than I thought. <laughs> What's that look on your face? <laughs> I saw a little bit move. Like this. I, no, I did too. So we just got the subframe out. The engines are literally just holding on to by this little guy right here. So uh, yeah, honestly, that wasn't terrible. No, it's time to start the rod bearings. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're gonna take that to SSR, leave that in good hands. Anyways, guys, so we got the subframe out. Honestly, from the top end, this looks really, really, really good. Doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it, but here we go. 
crack right in there. That's something we wouldn't be able to see and we wouldn't have welded that and we would have never known. We're gonna have alignment issues. It would have it would have drove really, really, really weird. Right over here, another major crack right up here. We couldn't have even seen that. So again, we could have had this thing welded, but at the same time, we would have not seen all the damage. There was this major crack right here. Like, oh my God, guys, this thing is just separated from all kinds of different angles. See, I'm happy we're getting rid of this. We have that one. Honestly, this front thing, it has a lot of grease and oil. It's pretty much, it's pretty much that's pretty much the exact same thing. So we're just gonna probably use that. We do have to remove the engine mounts off that. That got ripped off. Um, but other than that, guys, honestly, I think we can get this back in here. So at least this thing can get back on the ground. So guys, we are at the end of the video. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't get the whole suspension on the car and get it to be driving in one video. I was really, really, really hoping we could put the full suspension on and drive it down the street, you know, go get the smog done, get the registration, everything sorted literally in this video. That was my hopes. But unfortunately, when me and Erlon were unscrewing the stuff frame, we heard that miniature like bend or whatever, and we saw the frame kind of tucking just a little bit, but that little bit is preventing that screw from going in. Now we could probably push the screw in and then angle it and probably screw it in some more, but we might actually strip something. And we don't want to strip anything, mainly because we are going to be taking this car to SSL Performance to get the raw bearings done again. And this is a clean title and we don't want to do anything janky. So we want this stuff frame to be able to come off and put back on as easy as it could be. So we can't out of the conclusion that we need to get it down to a frame shop. Thankfully, all the other screw holes lined up. It's just that one screw hole. So that's really good because if they just pull it out a little bit, they put in the screw and it lines in perfectly. Easy peasy lemon breeze. And they can go ahead and do all their alignment checks there at the frame shop. We're gonna make sure that this thing's 100% perfect. And it really just comes to show you guys that a clean title doesn't always mean it's a clean title. I think I've purchased probably three or four BMWs in the past that were clean titles with severe damage. And uh, you know, it really just comes to show a, a well-maintained car is sometimes better than a clean title car because some salvage cars become salvaged just be, for, like, for the stupidest reasons. Like honestly, like I've seen cars literally total out because of a small accident and the owner says he just doesn't want the car because you have every right to say that you don't trust the car anymore and they, the insurance will total out the pay you out and they know they're gonna get high money from the auction so they don't really care. But long story short guys, this is a huge, huge, huge setback. But at the same time, it really comes to show you guys with rebuilding um, that you, de you never know what to expect. Me, honestly, the seller that sold me this car, he was really upfront. He was like, this car was in a previous accident before on top of the fact this already has a current accident. Um, and he knew that it was worse than it looked. So he's like, this is something that I don't really want to deal with. If that's something you want to deal with, you know, all power to you. For me, I just assumed it was a little bit easier than expected. But honestly, guys, it's not the end of the world. It's something we need to take care of. We just need to get the wheel on there. And thankfully, the suffering for the most part went on there, like seven screws out of the eight screws went in there. So we can hopefully put the full assembly back on there, the wheels and tires and everything, get it to where it's at least driving. So we can drive it up on a trailer and take it down to a frame shop and get that last incy wincy pulled out. Hopefully, every Everything can be perfect. So if you guys want to see that in the next video, make sure to smash that like button. I'm going to hopefully try to get the full suspension together in the next video and then take it down to a frame shop, get this thing aligned. Because once we get that sorted, this thing should be running and driving and I am just so, so, so stoked. But yes, I can't stress this enough, guys. Just to put it out there a million times over, when you go buy a clean title car, when you go buy a salvage title car, honestly, if the price is right, I have so many people hitting me up like, hey, is this a good deal? It's a clean title with high mileage. Hey, is this a good deal? It's a salvage title with low mileage and uh, it was vandalized before, but it looks perfect now. 
it all really, it's circumstance to circumstance. Like this car, hypothetically, if I didn't tell any of you guys, hey, it had a little bit of frame damage technically, um, I could have just buttoned everything up and sold the car and no one would have ever knew because you put the wheel liners on and everything. It's just, it's immoral. I know a lot of people do that. I know a lot of people at the auctions, they literally buy a car, they doctor it up, they make it look good. They put it right back on the auction. They're hiding major damage to the car. So I'm just kind of making this video to put it out there. For those of you guys who want to get into the rebuilding scene, just, just be cautious, be wary, and just Double check everything, especially suspension components. If you see any buckles or anything like, you know, around the suspension components, just know that that's probably gonna be a bigger project than you would anticipate. Because after dropping the subframe, which is a major job in itself, we did notice that the subframe itself had six or seven cracks. That's the only reason why all the bolts were lining up because the subframe was tweaked itself by being snapped in six, seven different spots. It was able to tweak itself and go in the hole. So long story short, just be cautious, be wary. This is a slight setback, but I did find a local guy that does frame pulling. Like that's his literally his main thing. I don't wanna take it out to a body shop because the interior is mint. I don't want the interior to get all messed up. So I literally just wanna take it to a frame shop and have them put it up on the frame rail and just pull it and we're good there. So that's the goal. Hopefully you guys will be seeing the next video. Hopefully I show you guys what shop I end up using for those of you guys who are in the local area of Sacramento. If you guys wanna end up using them as well, you guys will find out about them. I don't know who yet exactly, but I did find some people and they're open on Monday. It is currently Saturday. So uh, yeah, I'll keep y'all posted. But without further ado guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.